God says, when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen, because your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. This is not an easy subject to talk about. In fact, nobody really wants to discuss it. Yes, we hear tidbits about it in the news media at times. Even our leaders find it politically incorrect to really debate. And you know, many of our clergy today find it too sensitive to address. This is because it's a nasty piece of business. But it's one, however, that affects who and what we are. And it is something that we're going to have to be accountable for. Hello and welcome to Message Week, sharing those words of hope that we all need to hear. What we're talking about are the millions and millions of ordinary people like you and me who have been exterminated in recent decades. Yes, now that's not to speak of the doctors and lawyers and athletes and scientists, artists and musicians who may have been among them. People who never really got a chance at life. Let me explain. Now, I know how protective we are of our children. For example, pedophiles are adequately dealt with by our criminal justice system, let alone the media coverage it generates. And we are rightly incensed when we hear of Islamic clerics deluding their youth into becoming suicide bombers. And we're equally horrified when archaeologists find the mummified remains of a 14-year-old Inca girl apparently killed in a ritual sacrifice on a mountaintop. But did you know that our society today is just as culpable? We call it abortion, terminating the lives of those who are most vulnerable, those who should instead be recipients of our greatest care and love and protection. Unfortunately, our society today hides behind fallacious legal interpretations and arguments by lawyers and ethicists as to what determines human life. Our school textbooks endorse labels such as embryos and fetuses when they should be called for who they are, babies, our own sons and daughters. Isn't this the evolutionary model applied in the worst sense of the phrase, the survival of the fittest? You see, for many years now, we've taught our children that there is no creator, that there is no God, and we've proffered them instead the evolutionary model, which is a lying delusion that hides our real identity as the very children of God. We didn't evolve into existence. That's a lie. It's a big furphy. We are created instead in God's own image and likeness to be his children forever. That's the indisputable truth. It's not relative truth. It's not folklore. God is. And we'd better listen. Of course, if you take God out of our lives, out of the picture, how easy it is to carelessly believe that those infants are dispensable and in the worst kind of way. I'm glad that God is good and his judgments just. Because if according to scriptures we're going to have to give answer for every idle word that we may speak, can I ask what then will the judgment be for what we've done to our millions of murdered children? Aren't we collectively guilty of one of the most grievous of crimes? Is there any hope? Is there anything that we can still do? Yes, there is. God says, turn and repent. He says, turn from our sinful ways 
else in the words of the prophets, utter destruction awaits. You see, history is a good precedent for the type of consequences we might expect when wickedness reaches a saturation point that no one can ignore. You see, whenever a civilization's morals decline, its demise isn't far off. It's happened time and time again. Thankfully, for the sake of those who are faithful to him, God does intervene. It happened in the days of Noah and again in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, where God's judgment was given to a wicked and violent generation. You know, Jesus told his disciples that the time prior to his return would not be unlike the days of Noah, where there was 120 years of warning and witness, and no one listened and God finally passed judgment. You know, the good news is that God alone has power over life and death. We don't. Those children were never ours to begin with. They were simply on loan. Thankfully, Jesus says that one day all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out to stand and to live again. And he can say that on full authority because he paid a terrible price in his own life to account for our sins, our debts. There is a day of resurrection and there is a day of reckoning. There is hope. There is hope in turning around, in confessing our sin individually and collectively. Can I ask, are we up to the task? For the Message Week team, I'm John Classic. Remember, there is no shame in turning around, no dishonour in repenting. We can't bring back those children, but we can turn back to God and find forgiveness, healing and hope.